Hello everyone, this is Vivek and this is 35th tutorial of this Linux tutorial series. Today we are going to learn about Linux boot process in detail. So let's see what exactly it is. So when you turn on a system, the Windows boots or the Linux boots for you. But what actually happens in the background, you should know the details why it is important because in one of the lectures or maybe in the next lecture I'm going to show you that how you can break the root password now once you know how the boot system works then only you will understand how the breaking of root password is able to perform the task so let's start So the very first thing when you turn on the system it basically the system gets powered on and power to various devices is initiated right Next, what happens is BIOS POST. So what it means, BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. And it performs the operation called POST. POST stands for Power on Self Test. So BIOS is present on the motherboard ROM, that is read-only memory. And it basically it loads, it calls the POST program that uh, it tests all the needed devices, whether they are working properly or uh, are connected to the system or not. Once this is complete, the system proceeds. Next step happens is MBR, that is for Master Boot Record. So MBR is a small program that is stored at the first sector of the booting device. MBR executes the bootloader program that is GRUB, uh, which we'll see in the next slide, and it also stores the bootloader. Basically, it's just a small program which is hardly 512 bytes. It's stored in the first sector of the booting device that we already talked. Primary bootloader information is present in MBR. It also stores the partition table information and MBR validation check. Now next happens is GRUB, that is Grand Unified Bootloader is loaded into the memory. It is a bootloader package from the GNU project. It loads the mini list and the config file is present in slash boot slash grub slash menu dot list. It loads the kernel program and the init rd that is init ram disk kernel decides the configuration to boot into if se linux is to be enabled or not and what run levels to boot in initially the kernel is loaded in only read only mode so that no write operation is performed now next program it loads is init rd that is initial root file system kernel is statically compiled it may not have all the drivers needed to load the actual root file system it contains the drivers for additional devices which are connected to your system like it's Ethernet, RAID or SCSI. Dracut is the init RD infrastructure. So we are not going to talk Dracut about or any other thing in detail. If you are interested, go through the Google links and you will find plenty of useful information there. Just know the names. So until now, the actual file system is not loaded into the memory. It's the kernel which loads the file system into the memory. So kernel loads the actual root file system. It fetches the details from the drivers. It mounts the root file system in read-only mode. Also, it checks if the root file system requires any checks. It switches the root file system into the actual file system in read-only mode. This is where the operating system is getting loaded. It also loads the SCSI Ethernet devices. It also sets up the host name for your uh, computing device, which is present in slash hc slash rc dot sys in it. It checks the file system, that is FSCK. It remounts the file system in read-write mode. So now your operating system is loaded into the memory in read-write mode. So now any write operation is possible. It also reads the FS tab and mounts whatever entries are made there. Now next is SB Nate. So this is the first program that is executed when the system is turned on. Now it runs FSCK if it's required, that is disk. It coordinates the rest of the boot process and configures the environment for the user. It becomes the parent or grandparent of all the processes in the startup automatically on the system. So if you are going through the process list, you will see the very first program it got loaded was slash SB slash init. Now, next, we need to check the run level which is present in slash hc slash init tab file. So, run levels are checked in this particular file. The system default run level is selected. What it also decides what processes to start, monitor, and restart if they terminate. What action to take when the system enters a new run level. So, everything is decided in this particular configuration file. 
Now next comes the directory slash hc slash rcn dot d slash s star. So uh, I have mentioned n here that n denotes the run level in which your system is currently booting into. And s stands for the script which starts or which is executed at the start time. So it sets the script that is to be started or stopped at a particular run level. So script starting with k that is uh, it, it, it gets executed when the system is shut down and the system starting with s it's executed when the system is turned on that is start. So it follows the sequence the very, very first script which runs is s0 then s1 then s2 and so on and so forth. Similarly during the shutdown process k0 k1 that is killing uh, it's executed in sequence. Now next comes the file system slash hc slash rc dot d rc dot sysinit. So this file is the script that start up the main system services. You may have seen that we have used so many times this rc term. What does rc mean? So rc denotes the run control. So next and the final process in the boots process is slash hc slash rc dot local. So this is the startup script. So to run custom scripts or commands when the system boots up, this script is used. You can relate it with those startup program. It is traditionally executed after all the normal system services are started at the end of the process of switching to the multi-user level. Run level. When system is booted successfully, you might need to execute some program that are like your startup program you want to initialize some variables environments or you might to run some script at the startup so this is where you define what script to ex get executed so this is the flow we learn it starts with turning on the machine then it goes to bios mbr grub kernel init run level i know it's a little difficult to digest in one go uh, read about it go through this tutorial once again and you will be comfortable so in the next tutorial we are going to learn about breaking the root password now you know how the system boots into now so we can play and tweak with the boot process and we can break the root password how that will see in the next tutorial do subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the future updates thanks for watching this guys